Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home. Hi and welcome to Fairfield Today. I am your host, Temple Custer Montanez, with the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And uh, I've got a rare treat today, I've got to tell you. I am hanging out in an official bachelor pad. I am at the home of Josh Stage, and I'm also in the home of Tim Heft. And we're with these gentlemen today, um, actually for a really special reason. And both gentlemen have recently moved into this home. It's a, a completely refurbished home. Um, and it is their home. It's their place where they live. It's not a group home. They're not here with guardians. They're living completely independently. And um, it's been a really neat experience for them. And, and they've been had about a month to get settled in. And uh, we were checking in on them today. And so with me is Josh Stage. Hi, Josh. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you today? I'm very good. Thank you. And also to my left here is Tim Heff. Good morning. Okay. Hello. 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 <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for having us in your home. I, I got to say, right off the bat, for two bachelors, it's a pretty, pretty clean place here. I'm pretty impressed so far. Although I will say, there might, there may or may not have been a couple open potato chip bags when I walked in. Um, <laughs> I'm the clean one, just on record. Oh, you're the clean one. So you're, is that Oscar or Felix? It's the clean one. I think it's Felix. Yes, I think it's Felix. Yeah, you're Felix, and that makes you Oscar. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> So guys, you've had a month here to get settled in, and, and you, oh, you've been here two months. Okay, so you've had a couple months, let's say, to get settled in. How's it going so far? Uh, it's it's pretty good. We've we've got some some issues here and there, but that's that's with every every roommate situation. You know, it happens. Right. But for the most part, everything's going pretty well. So tell me about living independently. What's it like? Because I know prior to this, Josh, you were living with your father, and so now you're out on your own. You're making your own rules and your own decisions. Is it um, everything it was going to be cracked up to be? Well, you know, it's not. It's not fun being an adult. <laughs> be, being an adult kind of is bad because you know you got to pay the bills and whatnot, and you can't you can't play around with your money anymore. Right. But I'm learning that very slowly, and I'm doing pretty good with managing my money and getting my groceries and whatnot and I think everything's going pretty well well and the good news is your room is clean and I didn't see anything shady going on in there <laughs> yes I try I try to keep my room very neat because that's kind of what I am I'm a very neat person and I like my things a certain way well good for you uh, <clears throat> on another hand Tim how's your room looking <laughs> <laughs> Tim, you've been here two months now, right? Does it feel like home? Yeah, it does, because I used to live in a group home and, and uh, with six other people. And it was just like, you know, it's kind of. So here I'm an all independent and stuff, you know, tried to be, you know. So. Right. Now, Tim had told me recently that prior to moving in to this independent facility, that you hadn't ever really been to the, even to the grocery store to pick out your own choice of food. What was that like? Well, that. Well, I went the first day. I mean, it was, uh, I didn't know. I wasn't hungry, so I'm just thinking, okay, what? Well, well, I can't pick everything I want. So it was an experience, you know. And so what does that mean? Because I know you told me before that you didn't have the, your choice in food options. Well, now, now I can go to the store and pick what I want to eat and what not to eat and stuff like that. So. And so you're living with just the two of you, and, and as Josh said, that can always, you know, roommate situations aren't always ideal, but I would assume that it's better than living with, with six other people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd rather living with one than six, because you, they are, I, in the group home, they argue and carry on and stuff like that, but, <laughs> but I mean. I'm sure not every group home. But no, no, but the one I came from, you know, so it's, uh, but this, the, uh, Trying and then two one one uh, is very proud of me for moving out and getting my own place too. So now Tim had you had a Super Bowl? No, you had a Ohio State football party. I had a Ohio State football party the thirty first of uh, December because 
I just thought I, I couldn't do that at the group home. So I just thought I'd just go ahead and do that. And was, that was that the first time you'd ever hosted a, a, a party on your own like that? Yes. And, and uh, Amy, my payee down at 211, read the article from the, the, from the newsletter, and she said, well, that's amazing that, that, that you put words like that into a newsletter. Well, we're really proud that you were able to have that first party, and I actually was invited. Um, I had my children that day, or else I would have been here. And I don't know, Josh, is this an appropriate place for me to bring children? Well, well, I can't speak for Tim, but but as far as I'm concerned, it is. Okay, good, good. Well, I didn't notice you've got a lot of video games in there to keep you busy. What's an average night like here when you guys, because you both work, right? You both are working. So what's it like here in the evening? Well, basically, I've got Netflix and the WWE Network on my PlayStation 4, and I watch my thing, and he's out here watching his thing, and we just do our own things. Yeah. So you still have that sense of independence when you're here. You don't feel like there needs to be, there's no group activity or a planned meal or anything like that. No, no. I, I, we pretty much eat dinner at separate times every night and we don't really, I mean, we talk, but we don't really do things together, but we talk here and there and associate with one another, but we don't feel like we need to do things with each other. Right. Right. Now, have you had any guests come visit you since you've moved in? My dad comes over pretty much once a week, yeah. and my my stepmom came over a couple, couple weeks ago and made dinner for us. Well, that was nice. Now, I don't know about you. Now, when my parents come to visit, I have to clean up real quick. Do you have to do that? No. <laughs> they accept you the way you are? Yes, they, they know about my flaws. <laughs> I don't think you have very many flaws, Josh. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> So what's been the most surprising thing about living in your own space without being monitored 24-7? Well, just the independence, you know, that you have, you can come and go as you want, you know. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, that's what, because at the group home, you had to tell them what time you're coming back and stuff like that. So is there anything you miss about being in a group home or do you like this independent setting? I, I don't miss the group home. I like being out on my own and doing uh, where I can do stuff more. So, did you? How, how old are you, Tim? I'm 48. 48, okay. So did you ever think that you would get to this point in 48 years where you would be able to live independently um, and have people trust you to, to fulfill your own needs? Well, at some point, you know, I, I wanted to move out on my own. I didn't want to live no more in the group home because the rent was so high. <laughs> so, so I mean, it's uh, now here it's cheaper. So, but did you ever think you'd get to a day where people would say, "You know what, Tim, you're good. You could take care of yourself." Well, uh, I know uh, people that, uh, like Amy, she said that I, I'm at this point that I could take care of myself. And my IC also said that I, I could probably live out on my own too. It's got to be a good feeling though to be proving everybody right. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about you, Josh? Because you're younger. You're, you're in your 20s, right? Yeah, 25. 25. Okay, so I've got some 25-year-olds that I was hoping would eventually leave my house. So you're out of the nest now. Um, what's been the most surprising thing for you? Well, you know, like, like I said, the fact of, you know, I have bills I have to pay, so I have to monitor my money, and I can't go out every week and buy video games whenever I want and I got to manage my money better because when I live with my dad I could just go out and get whatever I wanted whenever I wanted and that's a new thing for me is having to manage my money better but is it do you have a good feeling that that people trust you to do that yeah I, I do pretty well with it and uh, I've got my staff member Nikki she helps me and she tells me what I can afford and what I can't afford and she helps me manage it. So I think I'm doing pretty well. So you're adjusting. It's been a month. Um, is there anything that you miss about the safety and security of living at home with your dad? About the only thing I miss is my dad. My dad and my stepmom. I, I miss being able to see them every night and being able to watch our TV shows together and stuff like that. Well, I would guess if you'd start cooking a little bit, maybe you'd get some people over here, Josh, that would sit down and watch a TV show with you. Yeah. <laughs> Except I don't cook. Oh. Unless, unless you like Hot Pockets and Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I can cook that. 
I did see that there's a, a big basket of Pop-Tarts over there. Does that belong to you? Yep. I eat Pop-Tarts every morning for breakfast. Okay. Yeah, the breakfast of champions, right? Well, when we come back, we're going to talk with both Tim and Jeff's ISCs, which is um, Fairfield DD talk for individual caseworker, and uh, get their, their perspective on what this means for these, these, uh, these gentlemen to be living on their own. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Fairfield Today. I am your host, Temple Custer Montanez, with the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And I am not in my own home. I am in a home, however, in this nice kitchen, um, which is the home of Tim Heft and Josh Staged, two individuals that are served by Fairfield County Board of Developmental B Disabilities, excuse me. And um, they have recently begun living independently. And that's not, that's no small feat for, for individuals um, in our community. And especially if they have developmental disabilities. And it's something that we're very proud of at Fairfield DD. It's a really unique opportunity for both young men. And um, with me are their caseworkers. In our field of, of speak, we call them ISCs, but they are individual caseworkers that work with both Tim and Josh. And so I'd like to say hello to Jeff Smeltzer. Good morning, Jeff. That's right. Good morning. <laughs> Jeff, tell me a little bit about what does this mean um, you know, for Tim have to be able to live independently in this in this environment? Well, I think definitely to him, I think it means a heck of a lot because he's been, um, I know he mentioned it earlier that he's been in a group home the last 15 plus years. Uh, so this is really his first chance uh, to be out on his own and be able to do the things he wants to do when he wants to do them. So I think it's very big. And is this unusual for, I mean, I don't know how many people you currently individually serve, but is this unusual? Um... Yeah, I mean, most of the people um, that we serve are either, you know, with family or, or they're in, um, you know, provider homes or such or group homes. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's uh, not very uh, often that we get the chance to uh, help people like this to be in their own home. Right. And we certainly don't want to give the impression that a group home is, is a bad environment whatsoever. Um, but, you know, with someone as lucky as Tim gets the opportunity to take it to the next level, that's certainly something we want them to encourage to, to do. Exactly. Exactly. Um, like I said, it's just, it's just with the independence of being able to do things they want to do. Um, like you said, not anything to do with a group home or any other homes with uh, more than, you know, two individuals. But, you know, when they're in those homes... Um, they have to basically, you know, do things as groups. Um, and here, uh, you know, Tim and Josh can do their own things individually. They can call for their own um, transit, you know, to take them places. Or they have providers in the home for, you know, so many hours a day that, you know, those individuals can take them places they want to go or need to go for doctor's appointments and just going to get the groceries or, or going to a movie, whatever they want to do. So. Now, I have to tell you, this kitchen is not too shabby. Um, and in fact, I'm a little envious of the countertops. I'm going to make sure my husband is watching. Um, who manages the property, and, and how does that work with the upkeep and whatnot? Well, first of all, I, for right when I seen this for the first time, I was like, I want to live here myself. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is managed um, in cooperation with Fairfield DD. It's, it's managed by uh, Fairfield Hawking Metro Association. So they take care of all the, um, uh, the upkeep, uh, the maintenance, and everything. They, they take care of all that stuff for us. Okay, so I noticed too that in this, this house, um, it's a ranch style home. Obviously, you can't see that from, from where you're viewing, but there's a beautiful backyard, there's a deck, things of that nature. And so all of those things will be made accessible eventually? Correct, correct. They, um, that right now, there is a ramp on the front. Um, it's a little steep, so we're trying to you know, get them to, um, um, they're going to come in and do a new ramp. And then in the back, there's a nice backyard with a nice uh, uh, back porch. Uh, that they'll eventually build a ramp off the end of it, too, so they can enjoy the backyard. I don't know about you, but I'm hoping we get invited to some kind of barbecue or something. That's right. We could have some barbecues, and yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, also with me is Nicole Kemp, and Nicole Kemp is the ISC for Josh. Um, I'm sure that is a colorful job. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> he is so awesome. His personality is great. For those who don't know, Josh uh, works at the at City Hall, correct? Yes. No. 
downtown at the courthouse. At the courthouse. Okay, so he's a greeter. I would imagine he would be well suited for that. <laughs> yes, he is. All of his coworkers just love him because he's yeah, so bright personality. Right, right. And Tim Heff um, is employed by Fairfield County Board of DD in our administration office. So both young men are uh, gamefully employed in paying their own bills. What, have you seen any changes in Josh since since he made this move? Because not only is he living independently, but he sort of just left the nest as well, which can be a little, you know, we all remember that time. Yeah, he's he's doing great. He um, well, This is one of his dreams that he had and goal in mind. Uh, when I first met with him, that was what he shared. He wanted to work, and he's achieved that, and now he wanted to get his own place. Um, but he's doing wonderful, and um, there's not been any issues. As he shared earlier, he's missing his parents a little bit, having those evenings with them. But that's expected when you first leave the nest, so... But now, Josh obviously has some mobility issues. So how are those um, addressed when he's living independently? Well, he, like Jeff said, we have the ramp out front for him to enter the home. Um, we had to, there was some changes made in the restroom for him. Um, didn't, we had to move the sink just a little bit so his wheelchair would fit in there. Um, he does have HPC support a provider here to help him. Um, but not all the time. He still lives independently. And what we um, are trying to get into home right now is a home alert system. So if he would fall when there's no staff here, he has that button to push, and we can have um, the 911 here if, if needed. But um, And like Jeff said, we got the ramp for out back that we're putting in, and the guys are very excited to have a, a grill and a barbecue, and they've also talked about having a horseshoe pit. Right. Now let's talk about who's going to teach these guys how to cook. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Josh doesn't really have a desire. I think he's hoping Tim will. Okay, okay. Well, that's great. That's great. So what do you think, um, you know, when, when you were going into this and, and when you selected, you know, let Josh know that this opportunity had, had arisen and that he could move into someplace independently, what were some of the things you had to consider before talking to him about that? Well, we had to look at his budget and um, also if he wanted to do live alone or if he wanted to share with a roommate and share living expenses so he could get a nicer place. Um, we had to look at that. We had to look at the heating and, you know, the utilities, what that cost and what transportation also because, you know, he doesn't have parents helping him get to and from work. And um, so those were some things we really had to consider and also things for your home to furnish your home. We had to look for a bed and chair, furniture, so. So not unlike what anyone would go through when they were embarking out on their own. And what about like the life skills? I mean, we joke about the cooking, but I mean, has someone had to come in and teach them, you know, the proper way to clean the oven or sweep the floor or do any of those? I mean, I had to do that for my, my boys when they finally moved out. <laughs> Josh has a nice job in doing... Um, what he's able to do. He does a great job. And yeah, the cooking, I don't know that he has an interest to learn how to cook. I think he could do it if he wants to. Um, and I know his providers will work with him, but I don't know if he really wants to do that. I think he's looking for someone to come in and do that for him. Well, I, special lady. Right, right, right. Well, one of my funny stories is when I, I called the gentleman to tell them I would be coming out to interview them, they called me back and asked if I had a recipe for no-bake cookies. Um, and when I told them, well, yes, I do have a recipe for no-bake cookies, they said, could you make some? <laughs> <laughs> They're missing some of that home-cooked right, meals. Right. They wanted to make sure that I had the recipe for the no-bake cookies. They didn't, want to, they didn't want to borrow it. So what changes have you seen in Tim since he's been living independently? Uh, like I said, just, just being able to uh, get out and do things he wants to do. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how else to say it other than, um, you know, like I said, he can call. He knows he can call transit himself. Um, he can get rides with the provider that's in the home. What about, what about his confidence, his self-confidence or his sense of self? Well, Tim's never had too much problems <laughs> with confidence. Uh, he might be a little bit overly confident, so he's never had a problem that. But no, he's, um, he seemed, you know, at first, you know, it, it's, it's a change definitely for him. Um, so, you know, the first month, you know, it was a little, you know, he had some issues here and there, but we worked through those. And uh, now I think he's starting to relax a little bit and understand um, how things work and what he can do. And, and um, we're just going to go from there. Fantastic. Now, Tim also is a spokesperson for self-advocacy. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, he, um, um, oh my goodness. It's just a self-advocacy group. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Well, I know he, does a, he has a leadership role and he often yes. speaks and, and talks about um, helping others become their own self-advocate. Yes, he's very involved with that, and actually, you know, he, he tries to get, you know, become more involved uh, whenever there's things that come up. Um, so, yes, he's talked about, um, he's spoken in front of groups 
about this, about, you know, moving out on his own. He's already done that a couple times, and he's only been here a couple months. So, um, yes, he's very active with that and letting people know how he has advocated for himself and uh, how he's helping himself. Awesome. So what's next? I mean, you're, like, going, ticking off all the boxes. What's next for Josh? Well, one of Josh's goals is um, to maybe meet somebody that's important to him and um, see where that goes. So that's one of his goals because he, you know, he wanted to work and live on his own, and he, we got those two things, like you said, checked off. So, right, so if there's any, any single ladies watching, <laughs> you know who to give a, give a call. We need to screen first, though. <laughs> Not technically, just because that's who we are. How about you? How about, what's next for Tim? Tim? Um, you know, that's, that's still in the talks. Um, this was a big step, so we're still, you know, working – on all the uh, aspects deal, dealing with this. So uh, we'll move on that to, you know, pretty soon. But, um, uh, you know, he's, he's... How about cooking lessons? Well, that could be, yes. <laughs> that could be. He could use some of those, some of those lessons and skills for sure. Excellent. But uh, we'll, we'll just keep working with him to become more independent. Good, good. Well, thank you both for everything that you do, um, not only for, for Tim and Josh, but for all the people that we serve. And um, I got to tell you, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with this place. I'd like to uh, be invited back, Tim, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> but we appreciate everything that you do. And um, our thanks again to, tell, tell us the house maintenance, Hawking. Hawking Fairfield Metro. Hawking Fairfield Metro, we thank you for all that you've done and Fairfield DD. And until next time, I am your host, Temple Custer Montanez from the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Take care. Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home.